Hello, everybody. Adam here, Dr. Strife. So excited to bring you this review. I've been wanting to review this, and I didn't know how to go about it. Not quite for sure still how to go about it, but we're going to give this a try anyway, huh? So, this is my Final Fantasy VII Remake Review. Cannot believe I'm saying that because I can't believe this game exists. It actually exists. I have it on my shelf. I have it on my PlayStation. Wow. And if you've seen some of my videos in the past, especially my original reaction, which is probably one of my most popular videos to date on this channel, when they announced Final Fantasy VII Remake, if you couldn't tell, I was a bit emotional. I got a bit emotional. And this game means a whole lot to me. The original Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game of all time. Does this surpass it? I don't really think it does, but at the same time, I feel like it doesn't seem below it either to me. And maybe there's a little nostalgia in this, so take that for what you will, but I will be pointing out some good, I will be pointing out some bad. This game is not perfect. It's not perfect, but holy heck, is it amazing. So let's find out why I love this game so dang much. So, but first, let's get the negatives out of the way, because that's that's the least fun stuff. So there are some weird texture popping issues where some textures look a little rough in places. It's very minimal. Well, minimal for the most part. Most everything looks good. Every once in a while you'll see it pop in. Not a huge deal in my opinion. Some people will ruffle their feathers, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Sometimes camera cameras are wonky sometimes. They sometimes get in the way of the action. They do that a lot in action games. Sometimes the camera gets stuck in a weird spot. I don't know. It's something that developers haven't really figured out that well, but hey, that does happen. Just let me know. And this part may totally be my fault. I may be a total idiot, but a friend of mine... Uh, he pointed out that L2 opens up the minimap, and I didn't find that out till chapter 8. Yeah. So I'm getting roasted on Twitter for that, but hey, it's cool though. It's cool. I learned it. So if you're going to play the game, this is a spoiler for your review, so I should have thrown that out there first. But, uh, yeah, if you want to pull up the minimap, just hit L2 on the controller. Yeah. Don't be like me. But... That's really the only negatives I can think of off the top of my head. Let's talk about the good stuff. Other than that little texture pop-in issue, the graphics are incredible for the most part. The world of Megar feels real, it feels alive. Just looking at the plates with the lights coming down, like, it almost looks like a night sky, but you can tell there's still, like it's an artificial night sky, like there are lights there. It's not stars, but it kind of makes you think of stars. It's really kind of a weird, awesome thing. Character models look fantastic. Um, I may, well, I may say one negative thing, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it mostly positive here. Um, some of the other NPCs don't look as good as the main character models, but that's fine. I don't care. Um, it, it just it, everything looks so good, just. Uh, I just want to eat these up. Cloud looks amazing. Aerith looks amazing. These characters look like what we imagined when we were younger that these characters were going to look like. And, wow. And it has voice acting, which the original didn't have, and they are fantastic. You got all kinds of great voice actors coming here. They did change the cast, which some people were worried about, but, hey, it's fine here. These guys did a fantastic job. Brianna White, I believe I'm saying her name correctly, is the voice of Aerith, who apparently, from looking up her information, she's not done a lot, a whole lot of work. This is her first voice acting role, and the girl nailed it. The girl nailed it. She nailed my girl perfectly. That sounded wrong. But anyway, that, she did a really fantastic job, and yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> I really think they all did great. Uh, Barrett's voice was great. Uh, loved the voice of Cloud. Um, he really nailed Cloud really well, and the script was so well written, it didn't really feel like janky Japanese RPG translation. I mean, there is still some of the uh, or ooh, like the weird mouth things that they do, like, you know, it's a cultural thing, I'm not trying to put anybody down, but, you know, they have those things in there that are still there, but it doesn't affect anything. I still think it doesn't bother anything, and if the dialogue, the writing, is fantastic and they flesh out so much stuff in the game they flesh out in the story they flesh out the characters they flesh out the story in the world war 
Uh, I guess I should talk to you a little bit about what it's about if you're completely new to Final Fantasy. You play as this guy. He is a Shinra, Shinra, Shinra operative who was in a program called Soldier. His name is Cloud Strife. He joins up with an eco-freedom fighter group, or terrorist, depending on how you look at it, trying to take out the evil Shinra Corporation who's destroying the planet by sucking it dry, and so that way you can microwave your hot pockets. Yeah, electricity is evil. And yeah, this the story just makes you feel all kinds of emotions, and the ending is definitely something that's controversial. I won't go into it here. I loved it. Some people don't care for it, but... You need to judge that for yourself. I may do a spoiler talk, thinking about it, debating about it. If you want to hear it, let me know. Um, try to figure out what I want to do for that. But, yeah, if that's something you want to hear, let me know. All right, so you're probably wondering now, what about the gameplay? I want to play a video game, okay? I don't care about people talking. I want the video game. So, in the video game itself, the combat is fantastic. They're using an action RPG system. They're mixing action games, maybe not as crazy as Devil May Cry close, but action games and RPGs, and they're doing it really well. I've seen a lot of RPGs, especially sometimes Western RPGs and sometimes Jap Japanese RPGs too. They have this really slow and clunky combat system that's just not satisfying to me, and that's why it turns me off of a lot of these other RPGs is their combat is just so clunky. Like, if it's not a turn-based RPG, then it's just, you know, I just don't care for it. I just don't. Um, and this one actually mixes both classic Final Fantasy VII elements and modern elements together in this hybrid that just works so dang well. And what am I talking about? Well, first the action, the basic attacks, you just mash or hold down the button attack button to do your attacks you can sometimes with cloud there's an operator mode alternate attack mode or ability for the character to use then your atb gauge this little bar that fills up at the bottom you get one to two of them and it fills up at the bottom and allows you to do certain special things like cast magic spells use special abilities or use items and it works so well. It adds the RPG element, the tactical element that you love, that you want, but also adds an action style that doesn't make you feel slow. It makes it feel like you're in control in real time. Now you can set up shortcuts. I didn't use shortcuts, but when you pause to go to the menu, it slows down time. If not, you wanna use shortcuts, you wanna do it on the fly and just go boom, boom, boom. You can do that. And it works fantastic. And so far, it's my favorite RPG system, battle system to date. I really think it's done a good job. They even included the materia back, so you basically you can make your own character, whatever loadout you want them. If you want them to be a healer, make them a healer. If you want them to be a tank, make them a tank. If you want them to be a magic attack warlord, you can do that too. It depends on the combination of the materia that you use and how you build it. Oh, and there are weapons. The weapons upgrade. I completely forgot about those. You can upgrade your weapon. So if you want to use the Buster Sword throughout the whole game, you can do that. Yes, the starter weapon, you can use it throughout the entire game because you can upgrade that weapon as you go along. Now, granted, you do want to collect the other weapons because you get other abilities and stuff that you can use with them. And I highly recommend you do that. But, yeah, it's just... Oh, I'm just speechless. I'm doing this off the cuff, kind of, so forgive me for that, but I just, wow, 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 like, there's just so much good stuff in this game, and there are side quests, now, I'm the kind of person I get overwhelmed with side quests, I find that this doesn't have as many, some people may find that a detriment, I find that as a positive, especially someone who doesn't have a ton of time, um, the reason I was able to even beat this game so quickly is I took a little vacation, <laughs> so I could finish this game. Um, and beat it and complete it. And wow, I am so glad I did. Uh, and some of the side quests even affect other things that you can do in the game. So, like it can affect certain events, it can affect other things. So keep that in mind. What you do in the quest, what you don't do in the quest, keep in mind that can have some outcomes. Not a huge fallouts or anything like that but it can make little story and 
graphical differences, let's put it that way. Oh, forgot to mention, boss battles, sometimes they can spike a little bit with the difficulty, sometimes the fights spike in difficulty a little bit, but the challenge makes it fun, and on top of it, the soundtrack is incredible. I can't believe I forgot about the soundtrack, one of the best gaming soundtracks, in my opinion, of all time. So fantastic. Sorry, I had to throw this in, but yes, incredible. So, overall, I really want to talk more, but I can't really think of anything else off the top of my head, and I'm probably going to work on this video and be like, crap, I forgot something, but I think I'm going to leave it as is. Yeah, I really love Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's definitely, in my opinion, the best game this generation. Hands down. Don't know if it tops Final Fantasy VII for me. It's been something I've been debating for a while, but I will say... Especially with the ending and everything's got me thinking. I think it's up there with it. I think it hangs right up there with it. I don't think it replaces it. Go play the original too. But I will say this. This is an improvement on the combat and the graphics. But yeah, just everything about it's so good. All I will say is... Don't look at this as a separate game. Look at it as a companion piece. A companion piece that adds to the game. To the original game. And expands. And does so much. But that's all I'm going to say. And I hope that it's not spoilery. Because if it is, I'm sorry. But I don't think that's spoilery. But we'll get more into all that. If you're curious about my cryptic talk. We'll, we'll go more into that. Into my spoiler talk. If we do one. Hopefully we'll do one, but we'll see. Anyways, till next time, game on.